In the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge we live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Siksika, Kainai, and Pakani nations, the Tutsina and the Stony Nakoda nations, the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. Traditional land of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Neutral People. Traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, Ojibwe, and Métis people. Traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. Erie, Neutral, Huron-Wendat, Kudasani, and Mississauga territory. Traditional land of the Mi'kmaq people. The traditional territory of the Neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. Traditional territory of the Mi'kmaq people. It's unceded in Klakatma First Nation territory. Welcome to Journey Interrupted Clay 2020. This isn't how we'd hope we'd be gathering this year, but I'm super excited that you're here. My name is Emily and I'll be your host throughout our time together today. For the next 45 minutes, you're gonna be treated to one of our large group gathering or LGG experiences in digital form. We'll worship together with the Clay Band and the Clay Drama Troupe, hear from our en route keynote speaker, Melanie Delva, and learn about the amazing projects youth from across the country have been up to. Ready? Let's go. Hello everyone. I'm so happy to be with you here today. My name is Jordan Smith. If you haven't been to a youth gathering before, I'll first say that worship is central to everything we do. Prayer and praise are not isolated to two time slots a day, but are part of our entire program as we explore our theme, this year being the journey on the road to Emmaus. With that said, at Clay, we set aside two times each day for an intentional time of worship. This has taken place in many different settings over the years, sometimes in a large local church, in a convention center room, outdoors, and in 2018 in Thunder Bay, around Lake Tamblin. In these morning and evening worship times, we, we try to worship in different ways, drawing on the talents of people who come from a bunch of different settings and who each do church a little differently. There's not one proper way to do worship, and we try to give all of you a chance to hopefully experience something different at Clay, while still connecting to what you might be familiar with at home. I remember my first youth gathering, I attended a workshop on how to be a worship assistant. The instructions and guidance we were given reflected what would happen to my home congregation on a typical Sunday morning, but then they asked us if we wanted to read the prayers at the closing large group gathering. And let me tell you, Walking out on that stage on Sunday morning with bright lights in a giant gymnasium with a microphone in hand, this is not what I was used to for doing church. But that is what church might be like for some of you or for your friends. And so looking to next year, my hope is that we can get the diversity of worship experiences from across our denominations and our country represented. How does your youth group do church? What do you sing together? How do you reflect on what you read in the Bible? How has your group learned to pray together? My prayer is that the way we worship together next summer might reflect the diversity of answers you just thought of. It's been hard for many of us to be away from our youth groups and away from our church communities for months now. As we start to gather again, as we figured out different ways of worshiping since March, I hope that the creativity we've been forced into continues. And that this creativity is experienced again through your participation with clay so while we are physically a part of that this time let us come together in our prayer god of the journey i want to thank you today for all of the youth and youth leaders across the country in our many churches be with them as they continue their journey through this summer through this time where we had hoped to be gathering in person to spend time together to learn, to sing, and to worship. Help us feel connected during this time where we are apart, knowing that we are one in Christ, joined together not just with each other, but with all those who know you around the world. We ask that you help us remain creative. May your spirit guide us in finding ways to worship in different ways, both those that are familiar and those that are different. Guide us in the year ahead as we return to our local churches, 
to our schools and to a routine that will feel both familiar and different. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. One of my favorite things about Clay is meeting amazing youth from all over the country and forming lasting friendships with them. My favorite part of Clay are the large group gatherings because I'm able to have an amazing worship experience with several youth from across Canada in one worship space. My favorite part about Clay is meeting new people. Next up is the Clay Band bringing us a song that's older than I am, but we still haven't figured out when to clap for. It's On This Rock. darkness you 
my favorite part of Clay is meeting new people. One thing I loved about Clay was being able to listen to the incredible guest speakers and hear their meaningful stories. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. And as they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. They urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And then their eyes were open and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were our hearts not burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the 11 and their companions gathered together they were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And they told them what happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of our Lord. Now we have Melanie Delva, our en route keynote speaker. Melanie has been from coast to coast of this country and is the Reconciliation Animator for the Anglican Church of Canada. Welcome, Melanie. Hello, Clay. My name is Melanie Delva and I am the Reconciliation Animator for the Anglican Church of Canada. And I was to be your theme speaker at Clay 2020 and like you, I am not in Calgary. I am here in gorgeous, unceded Inklakatma First Nation territory. And I'm wondering how you're feeling about all of this. I feel disappointment. I feel sad that we are not able to be together in person. But I've been thinking a lot about journeys interrupted in all of this. And it really speaks to me that it really kind of matches up with the, our theme of a journey and the story of the road to Emmaus. Sometimes interruptions can feel like cancellations. So it feels a bit like we've canceled Clay. And I love that we re-envisioned it as a journey that has been interrupted. And I'm pretty sure that the disciples in this story also felt like there was a pretty serious cancellation. Here Jesus had promised a kingdom, an amazing kingdom of justice and peace 
where the Romans would be kicked out, and finally the people would be able to worship God and be free. And now Jesus is dead, at least in their minds. So they probably think the kingdom that Jesus promised has been canceled. And here Jesus comes alongside them and chuckles. He calls them foolish, but I don't think in a judgmental way. I think in the way of saying, can't you see that the journey is still on? And I am still with you. I'm still with you. The promises are real. And in fact, what I think Jesus is saying to the disciples is, not only is the kingdom not canceled, but the journey is on and the interruption is the journey. It's an important and integral part of it. What I also find interesting about this story is that Jesus is re revealed to the disciples only after they've urged him to stay with them and he goes and breaks bread with them together. So it seems to me that our role, our job, in this time when we're not able to come together in person is to find a way to urge Jesus to stay. Now Jesus is gonna be with us whether we urge him or not, but when we urge him to stay, we create the space in our own hearts and in our own communities for the spirit to do amazing things. And I really feel that God is promising us the same thing. Not only is clay not canceled, but this interruption is the journey and an important part. I think that we can urge Jesus to stay in ways like showing one another extraordinary love. We can urge Jesus to stay in continuing with our spiritual practices, prayer, study of scripture, checking in on one another and being in community as much as we can in these times. When we create that space, when we spend that time with Jesus, and Jesus' friends, our fellow human beings, we create space for the Spirit to show up in unexpected ways, creating that burn within us that the disciples talk about afterwards. So my prayer for you, for me, for all of us, is that we would find a way to live into this interruption and to begin to envision it as an integral part of our story together. How can we be Jesus' hands and hearts to one another and to the world in a time that is so challenging? So my prayer, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, my siblings, my friends, my prayer is that we would all find ways to create the space for the Spirit to show up and show us what this journey means for us. Be safe, be well, God bless and keep you, and I can't wait for a time when we can once again come together and look back on this time together and say, did our hearts not burn within us as he spoke to us? God bless you. Take care. Theater lights are very blinding. There we go. Now I can see all of you. I can make eye contact with you guys. And there's waving. Hi. Now I know you're thinking, but in theater you don't make eye contact with people. This is a little bit of a different kind of theater. Now it's very dark in here. And it reminds me of a story in Genesis. In Genesis, there's nothing. It's silent. It's quiet, and suddenly a voice says, let there be light. Oh, that's down, 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 down. Woo! And there was light. God's voice called upon and created light from nothing. Now, I love doing voices. And I thought, ever since I was young, what does God's voice sound like? God called on and created light and everything, so God's voice must be powerful, authoritative. So I imagine it was something like, I am the Lord your God. Obey me, for I created you, or you will be punished. 
For I see you when you're sleeping. I know when you're awake and... Santa? <laughs> see, I know God wants me to be good, but... Santa Claus, really? Good for only one day a year? That didn't seem right. And I thought maybe God's voice is something a little more friendly. Something more fun, a voice that was familiar. Something like if I prayed, I'd hear, Hey, it's God. Leave a message. <laughs> I just want y'all to know that uh, if you hear some thunder later, it's because I'm playing some bowling against the angel Gabriel, and I plan on mopping the floor with him. So you rest easy. Say the now I lay me down and all that. But I realized that God seems a little disconnected. Like God is active in my life doing things, so what does God sound like? But then we were talking about God being a weaver of stories, a storyteller. I thought, what if God is like a super narrator, you know? And then the performer proceeded to say things about his life, things people wouldn't necessarily relate to, things that may be a little uncomfortable as he made eye contact with the person in the front row holding their lanyard very tightly. <laughs> and she looked away very sheepishly. But again, that God seems too distant to just be reading words off a page about us. So what does God's voice sound like? For so long I was so lost and I was trying to figure that out, but I realized I didn't know what God's voice sounded like. But I heard lots of other voices. You're worthless. You are a broken person. You don't matter. That stung. And the thing is that voice wasn't always foreboding, sometimes that was my own voice saying, God, why did you give me this body? God, I don't like the color of my eyes. God, I don't like the weight on my body. But I thought about it and I answered my own question. See, I heard this negative voice because I was listening for it. But I had to listen for something else, like maybe even a whisper. God's voice can be a whisper. God's voice can be that loud, masculine voice. God's voice can be that soft, kind, and feminine voice. God's voice can be a voice when you're afraid. God's voice can be the voice that you hear when someone says, I love you. God's voice can be the one in silence when someone is just hugging you. I know I hear God's voice when I hear the music around me. I know when I go back home, I hear God's voice when I look into the beautiful blue eyes of my niece as she looks at me and says, my daddy doesn't love God, but does God love my daddy? And I say, yes. God loves him so much and he loves you. So the question is not what does God's voice sound like, it's how can we tune our ears? How can we tune our ears to listen for God's voice, because there are two voices that matter, God's voice and your voice. Hi everyone, my name is Charlotte, and I'm going to take a couple of minutes to talk about the National Youth Project. Two years ago, at Clay 2018, we came together to introduce a new National Youth Project called Welcome Home which would focus on the issue of homelessness in Canada and encourage youth to get involved in their local communities. We learned about the issues surrounding homelessness in Canada, shared and reflected on stories, participated in a simulation activity, signed postcards for a postcard campaign, and donated hundreds of socks to local organizations in Thunder Bay. Although we can't all be together to share stories this year, that doesn't mean the project has to stop. We have resources that you can use on your own in your physical distancing bubbles, or even virtually with your youth group. If you like reading, check out our novel study on No Fixed Address by Susan Nielsen to learn about hidden homelessness. If you're interested in learning about local organizations, you can check out our open door and libraries activities. And if you're interested in advocacy, take a look at our postcard project. All of these resources and more are available on the Clay website, claygathering.ca, and new resources will be released soon. Even though we can't be together in person this year, we can still work together on the National Youth Project commitments to learn and raise awareness of the issues around poverty, homelessness, and substandard housing in Canada, 
to act by supporting local programs, to advocate for funding and accountability, and to pray for safe, affordable, and adequate housing for all. My favorite part about Clay is getting a chance to worship God in a way that my church doesn't normally do. My favorite part about Clay is being able to meet people from all across Canada who I wouldn't have met otherwise. Hi everyone, I'm Sharla. My first gathering was full serve in Winnipeg in 2006. And I can't tell you just how disappointed I am that I won't be seeing you in Calgary this summer. I was so looking forward to meeting all of you first timers and reconnecting with old friends while we learned and worshiped together, growing in our faith and in deeper relationship with Jesus. It seems that this whole year has been filled with these kinds of disappointments. We have all made plans for our life journeys. It's been maybe a graduation or a prom that we plan to, to attend. Or maybe it was just a visit with family or friends we haven't seen in a while. Maybe a really great summer vacation or a family trip, or even celebrating a milestone birthday with a great party. And all of those plans have been rerouted. Our journeys have been interrupted. We've been forced to take a detour. Some of our plans just needed to be put on hold for a while and we'll resume when it's safe. And some of us have been put on different paths altogether. But no matter which category we fall into, with Christ, there's always hope for an amazing future. The scriptures are filled with stories of journeys that were expected to take someone from one place to another, from Jerusalem to Emmaus, and something happens to send them on a detour. Think about the disciples. I'm sure their life plans did not include finding themselves dropping their nets, their jobs, their families, and everything they knew to follow a complete stranger around for three years. And yet, well, they became Jesus' closest friends and students, and ultimately were tasked with sharing this amazing story with the world. Their lives took a bit of a detour. Their journeys were interrupted and amazing things happened. I want to invite you to pick up a copy of our Journey Interrupted Bible Study from the Clay website to dig deeper into other stories of detours we can find in our scriptures. Stories of hope and comfort, particularly when we find ourselves struggling with our GPS as it recalculates. I know we will meet again, but until then, stay safe. God of love, you help us turn our worries into prayers. You hear the confusion, uncertainty, and anxiety in our minds right now as we are reminded of what we are missing this week as we were supposed to be together. We lift our burdens to you so that we can let them go, knowing you are here to listen. Thank you for all the new ways of building community that have emerged during the pandemic. We pray that over the next year we will remain connected through worship, Bible study, working on the National Youth Project, and reflecting on the Emmaus story. We are thankful for the music and storytelling that we can share in so many different ways, which reminds us that we are not alone on this journey. We pray for Clay and the hundreds of young people who are prepared to gather in a new way next summer. We call you to be our lighthouse in the wavy seas and our guide in the wilderness. Creator God, the church is changing. Our lives are changing, but we trust you. The unknowns of your plan have no end, but neither does your grace. Amen. Go in peace. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. 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 And serve the Lord with joy passion. Thanks be to God. It has been so wonderful to worship with you today. 
Thank you to all those who made Journey Interrupted possible, our fantastic Clay National Planning Committee, our Clay Band and Drama teams, Melanie, and all the youth who sent in videos to be included in this project. Thank you. But it wouldn't be Clay without one of our favorite singing and dancing songs, My Lighthouse. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. Your truth will 